AI agents and chain tech frameworks are one of the most important technologies in the world of AI moving forward from 2025 to the future. With that in mind, many companies are coming up with different tools, different frameworks for agent creation. So Hugging Face, which is a platform, a machine learning platform where you can find data sets, uh, find different models and run models and so many other things, just came up with their own agentic tool. That's what we're going to be looking into in this video. All right. Yes. So Hugging Face says introducing small agents, a simple library to build agents. Now, keep in mind the whole idea about small agents as a tool is that as the name imply small the idea is to minimize the amount of code that was used to create agents this was announced a little bit ago and you can see today we're launching small agents a very simple library that unlocks agentic capabilities for language models here's a glimpse and if you can look at the code real quick here it's pretty simple so of course you are importing all of these dependencies and then you have the actual coding or code agent. And as you can see, we're passing tools. So this could be functions, whatever we specifying that agents going to be having access to. So duck, duck, go search tool, which is a way for agents to be able to search the web. Okay. And we're passing here a model from HF hugging face API model. So all of this, and then you just say agent that run, and pass the query and then you should get some results if you scroll down there is a gif that tells you exactly the results how it all works okay let's go ahead and take a look exactly the thought process behind small agents and what is the promise so if you go back to the hugging face repository in fact you can get there from clicking here from this announcement page can read more if you want to read more what are agents when to use them code agents and so forth we're just going to go ahead and click here and this is going to take us to the small agents repository as you can see it was published not too long ago and it already has 2.4 k stars so let's go ahead and support them a lot of code here but let's go ahead and read more about this small agents a small library to build great agents. Everybody promises that. Let's see. Small agents is a library that enables you to run powerful agents in a few lines of code. Well, as you saw, that is true. Okay, so they promise simplicity. The logic for agents fits in close to a thousand lines of code. And we kept abstractions to their minimal shape above raw code. So first class support for code agents i.e. agents that write their actions in code as opposed to agents being used to write code. So this is a differentiation uh, from the normal agents where most of normal agents, they are used to write code. In this case, the agents are actually going to write their actions in code. So as the steps that they need to do, as you will see, to get to the result that you asked for them to do, it's going to actually include code as part of the processing to get to the results. So very interesting. It says here on top of this code agent class will support the standard tool called agent that writes actions as JSON text blobs. Okay, it has hub integration, which means you can share and load tools to from the hub and more. It's coming support for any LLM. It supports model hosted on um, hub loaded in their hosted on hub loaded in their transformers version of through inference API. So if you're not familiar with hugging phase, they allow you to actually run large language models or even just use inference, such an API of some sort to infer, to do some inference to those language models that they're running. Okay. So they're saying it supports that, but also supports models from OpenAI and Tropic and many others via our light LLM integration. Okay. And they say here a quick demo, how to do this. The first thing you need to do is say pip install small agents. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. So I already have pieces of code here. And most importantly, I have the virtual environment running. 
So make sure you do that. And let's go ahead and say pip install small agents. And I already have that installed, but for you, it will take a few minutes to get all of those de dependencies added. Then they say define your agent, give it the tools it needs, and run it. All right, let's just copy this code. And I already have most of it anyway, so this is why they have that same thing. I've just made a few changes. So what's happening here? Well, we're saying from small agents, we're importing the code agent. That's the main class. We're importing a few tools using the DuckDuckGo search tool and the HF API model. So this is the implementation of all of the HF Hugging Face API models that you can infer to get them to run. Now, if you run like this, if you say just HF model, if you hover over, you can see the default is Quen 2.5 coder. 32b instruct. Now this is important because this is coder. So that means this model here is very optimized for coding, which makes sense because as you learned, this the small agents library focuses on agents that know how to write code or at least understand code. So it makes sense that the default is always going to be a coder based uh, coding based large language model. Very good. And so that's what we how we create our agent like that. And then we just say agent that run. And then we pass, for instance, a query that says, how long would it take to get to Mozambique from Portugal? So now if we go ahead and run this app that pie like this, you can see that it's going to go through a process. So now just ignore what is here. Let's just let it go first. And I will tell you. So the final result the output is final answer is 10 hours, which is pretty accurate, actually. But let's look at the steps it went through. You can see that at first it shows it's showing everything here new run. So it creates a new thread per se. And then we have the query. And now it tells us exactly what we're using. So we're using the HF the HF API model, in this case, the default one, as I told you, is decoder 32 B. Okay, now here's the execution part. So the execution here executing this code, so it creates this code and is executing it in a certain environment. So travel says web search. So it actually goes and does web search. Why? Because we've added the tools. If you remember correctly here, we have the tools that it needs to use if need be, it's going to be DuckDuckGo search, all right? All of that is set up. And then once that search is done, it's going to print all of that. And you can see the log search results. It went ahead online and did some search, Portugal to Mozambique, six ways to travel, found something online to extract the information it needs so that it can pass around and evaluate and get the final result. And so it got a few of these links here. You can click, of course, I'm not going to do that to help it get how long it will take to go from Mozambique to Portugal or Portugal to Mozambique either way. Okay. So again, see quite a few uh, links that it went to. Then it goes to step number one, because it didn't take much to get the information needs. It went ahead and got all of these pieces of information and did all of the internal tasks, steps and tasks, and then executed again, the fastest travel, it got 10 hours and the final answer, fastest travel is this. Now this final answer here, we don't have but it's internally created. So executing this code that it was created internally. And we can see here and you can see out the final answer is 10 hours. Okay, very good. Very good. So this is exciting. And the thing that you have to keep in mind here is the simplicity with which we can write or create agents. Okay. Remember, this is coding agent because that is the base class. All right. So going back to the explanation here, you can see that the code agents it says here our coding or code agents, the large language model engine writes its actions in code. As you saw, that's exactly what happens. It writes all of its action in code. If you come here, execute code, 
this is one action the step it's an action and we got the results and then even when we want to execute the the final part of thing it's going to also write code and execute that which then we get the final answer as text it says this approach is demonstrated to work better than the current industry practice of letting the llm output a dictionary of the tools it wants to call it says here it uses 30 percent fewer steps that's amazing which means uh, fewer calls to the large language model now if you understand if you remember is that if you have an agentic workflow that makes many calls to the large language model well number one is latency which means it takes time to get to your result but also you get charged call that you make right if you're using open ai or any other inference um, that is not under your control so this is good if it's 30 percent uh, fewer steps or fewer calls then that's really good that's what they tell us right that's the appeal for using small agents and says here reaches higher performance on difficult benchmark of course if you want to learn more you can click on these hyperlinks and learn more about that the other important security issue here that we have is that when you're running or you have agents that are literally running code on your environment that poses a security uh, issue it says that code execution can be security concern arbitrary code execution makes sense if something happens so you don't know what code is being created by the large language model and it could be corrupt and do lots of damage so they know that and they say they provide options at runtime so they have a secure python interpreter to run code safely in our local environment and also it has a sandbox environment using e2b and they talk about how small small is and they say it's about uh, less than 1000 lines of code the agents.api uh, that py which is the main uh, file okay for this whole tool okay so that's pretty amazing and still we implement several types of agents we have code agents which writes actions as python code snippets and the more classic which is the tool calling agent which leverages built-in cool tolling methods and if you go to the actual guide under hugging face you'll see that essentially they talk about the same thing and uh, you can learn more about what's going on very good now the next thing i want to show you uh, as you can see here we are actually using what we call hugging face inference api model when we run like this because that is what we're doing here we say models we're going to just use whatever uh, the hugging face api model will give us now there are times when you want to use your local models for obvious reasons now you can do that now in order for you to do that if you want to use a local you can but also as you saw previously you can use open ai models you can use many different kind of models they have an interface for you to do that in code but i'm going to show you how to use a local olama models uh, for that that means you have to be running olama you have to have olama installed and running now if you don't know what olama is or how it works and i have another video you can find here or you can search uh, on my channel where I show you exactly how to install Olama, what is Olama, how to install, how to work with Olama locally. So make sure you have Olama installed and running and a few models also pulled into your system. To do that is very simple. So I have already the call code here called local py and you can find the same concept really in the documentation. So here what I'm doing here now I'm using small agents to import uh, duck duck go search tool code agent of course that's what we need but also i have this light llm model what this does if you have over it allows us to pass a model model id for instance if you want to pass anthropic cloud like this you can do like that and then you can pass the api key so for such models anthropic models you'll have to have an api key to add here now because i'm running locally you say model you say olama underscore chat and then the name of the model you're going to be using notice that i'm using coder extra this is another quen coder that is locally sourced that i've put or pulled into my system using olama okay so one thing you can do to check out what you have installed you can say olama list this will list all of the olama models that you have so you can see i have quen 2.5 i 
I have other ones, Kubuntu 5 Code or uh, 7B Context, and this one and others that I've added on my machine. Okay, so make sure to go and say something Olama, I believe, Paul, and the name of the model, preferably a model that handles code for obvious reasons, as you know now. You can see that in this case, you can pass Olama as an API key, or I believe you can also have an empty string, but just put Olama there. And the rest is still the same. You can see you have code agent, tools, we pass that, and model, now we're passing this model that we instantiate. And then we can do the same thing here. We can agent run and pass the uh, question or the query. Once that runs, I can just print the system prompt template. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and comment that out so we don't get confused. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if we can run this real quick. So this is now local.py. Okay, so you can see now it's using our local one. That's why it's saying Olama chat and it's using light LLM model. All right, so after a few moments, you can see that it went ahead and ran the query using our Olama uh, Quen coder internal that we have here. And you can see that it's true because now it says light LLM model, Olama chat. So that's the distinction. And of course, everything is code based. So you can see executing this code here that it wrote and it's writing everything and it's simple. Um, gives us execution logs that and final answer is indeed that okay so final answer is this number there all right now I can change the question to say something different perhaps that so now how long will it take to get to Mars let's see how this will behave okay same thing step zero executing executing this code here looks like code execution failed that's what it's telling us and then went ahead and did the search the web search to find articles or help to get to the right conclusion and all of this stuff that we've seen before and then we have the code execution again step one looks like it failed did the same thing so the good thing here is that these agents are able to repeat execution or attempts. So if it fails first time, I think um, it goes ahead and repeats or attempts a few times until it stops. Okay, so step two does the same thing and looks like everything failed. Now it's going to the fourth attempt or fifth. Okay, you can see now reached max iterations because it can't just go forever. Okay, so it's, at some point it will stop. And at this point I can hear my computer kind of complaining because I'm using local models that's why it's just not happy now but okay so it finished everything let's see what it says final answer giving the that we cannot directly perform web scraping blah blah blah. very good distance between earth and so it's now just using its own knowledge base to see if it can come up with an answer all right so that's not too bad at least it went ahead and found some answers. I'm going to stop this real quick because my computer is just going bananas. All right, so that's what I wanted to show you, a quick demo of the small agents tool here by Hugging Face. And I hope this was helpful. And if you like this, let me know so I can make a more profound and more detailed demo and video or guide for you. So that is the main point here, folks, is that you know, this is good. That means these big companies are realizing that we need these tools so we can continue to build AI solutions, which is exactly what we want, which means this industry is not going anywhere. It's here to stay because otherwise they wouldn't be spending this much time putting all this together. Thank you so much for your time, folks. And let's see what else. Uh, if you're not subscribed, of course, always subscribe. As you see, we have lots of good stuff here going on. Till next time, be well.